Welcome to S Class, the highest tier in podcasting. With me is the anime animal. It's Robert. Ooh, ooh, that's spicy. Because we got a spicy conversation today, Justin. Ferocious. You were adding like a little bit of Italian flair at the end there as well. You have to. <laughs> and I am the master of manga. I'm your host, Justin. All right. What are we doing today, Justin? This is the big one. Today is our second to last episode of the year. We are just about there, and it is the anime of the year pre-show. We have seven different categories that have many wonderful nominees, but only one will reign supreme for each of these categories. It's more of an anime Oscars, Justin, right? Yeah, I would call it the Oscars. I think we <laughs> have to I think we have to use that a different name for copyright purposes, but we'll work. I don't on think that. anybody's gonna copyright strike us. <laughs> Frankly, I don't even like the Oscars, which is why I don't want to call it the anime. Never Oscars. watched one in my life. Yeah. Um, so the anime awards, whatever we want to call it. But we have seven different categories. They are best protagonist, best antagonist, best waifu, best husbando, best mentor, best battle, and finally best song. Rob, can you please read out the nominees for best protagonist? Okay, we're starting off with the protagonist. So we got Tomomi Nomiya from Real. We have Kana Endo from 20th Century Boys. We have Akira Tendo. Who is from Zombie 100. Thank you. We have Bochi from Ranking of Kings. We have Anya from Spy Family. And we have Akane from Akane Banashi. I think I have a clear cut unless you have a clear cut. Like a quick one to get rid of right yeah. now? Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, you, if you have it in mind, then start us off. Yeah, I'll get rid of uh, Kira Tendo. I think this is for Zombie 100, and he's the main character who's trying to survive this zombie invasion and cross off his bucket list and live his best life. I think the story and the adventure is what carries this manga more than the actual character himself. He is a little bit inspiring because he's this like worker who's miserable and works at some shitty company, and now he's like doing all the things he's always wanted to do. But it's not him in particular that's specifically interesting. Okay, that's that's fair then. Um, oh, I'm trying to think because I really like all of mine, but I think um we're not going to do Anya again this year. We've done Spy Family so much. Anya was fantastic in the anime, but we've talked about Anya at nauseum. Let's just we're done with Anya. Okay, I, I think Anya would really go further if you want me to get rid of mine first. Um, no, but it, what's it the doesn't point? matter, right? We've done so much about Anya. Everybody knows how awesome Anya is. She doesn't need our accolades, too, for the second straight year. <laughs> she was pretty fantastic, though. Yeah, seeing her animated, awesome. Yeah, hilarious, cute, adorable. Um, would definitely go higher if not if this was not her first appearance in our anime of the year type of conversation. And really, the order doesn't matter because it's just one. There's no like top three, top four for each topic. It's it's who's number one. I kind of like doing the order where you kind of get no, like- No, the order does not matter. <laughs> I think it does matter. But I think for this one, I think for me, I think there's one that's kind of more clear for this one. So it doesn't matter as much for me. Go ahead. Um, I can I can honestly get rid of both of mine. Um, Tomomi Nomiya from Real. He's kind of this like fuck up delinquent. He's the guy who starts the series off with like the Kobe Afro and he's like, I'm going to start a new life. And he shaves his head. He's like, now I'm like Michael Jordan. And um, <laughs> he gets in a whole bunch of fights and he, you know, he's just really inspiring. He's just trying to do his best and trying to make a basketball team in Japan. But he, he just needs to keep restarting over because he, he is not the brightest guy, but he, he's really trying and um, you can feel it in every page that you read. Uh, so I'll get rid of Nomiya here. And then the second character is Kana Endo from 20th Century Boys. Basically, uh, there's a cult that's starting to take over the world. And she's like a 17-year-old girl who's somehow leading the charge against this world power of a cult. And she's just kind of a badass. Like, at one point, there's she lives in Japan. And there's like a whole bunch of mafia wars going on between the Thai and the Chinese. And there's like, she unites the two as a 17-year-old girl. And you see these two angry 50 year old men they're like oh god is that the thai mob boss and the chinese mob boss and they shake hands in agreement to work with her to to help combat the the cult leader so she's kind of a badass uh, so what's can, the knock <laughs> uh she can stick around a little longer um i don't know how strong you're feeling about akane is my question i mean 
I love Akane Minashi. It's probably the best new thing to come out this year, uh, manga-wise. She's a great main character. She's strong. She's confident. She reminds me of Soma from Shokugeki no Soma, where she's like, she's already good at what she does, but you're still seeing her grow, and she still can fail, but like, she's learning from the failure, and it's not like that annoying, depressing shonen protagonist. She's a great protagonist. (laughs) She's not number one. Yeah, she's no Deku. She's not number one for me, but I really did enjoy everything they did with her. Like we were saying earlier, I think for me, again, the order does typically matter. But for me, I think that the number one was so clear from the beginning that it didn't matter, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. It's Bochi. I mean, come on. (laughs) Isn't it it amazing (laughs) that the best character, the best protagonist of this entire year was the character who does not talk? It's fascinating. It's Isn't it amazing? Yeah, and you know what's really funny is I was actually listening to some of our old podcasts, including our um, Ranking of Kings Ranking podcast. Of Kings. Yeah. And we both said, this is in quarter one, we said, he is probably going to win our anime protagonist of the year. Or if not, he's a very strong contender and the number one choice from quarter one. And three quarters later, no one has beaten him. I honestly didn't even remember that, but like... It's that that should show you how much we meant it when we said it back then, because like it's the second I saw this list, I knew it was Bochi. Yeah, that's why I felt like yeah, you can kill Anya as number five, even though she's not number five. Like it doesn't. None of these people matter compared to this little this little deaf mute kid who he's trying his best and he's succeeded. Yeah, and he's awesome, and he just like keeps going no matter how much he gets the crap beaten out of him. Like he doesn't stop fighting, and he forgives everyone. He's so kind hearted. And you see that all just through his emotion, because there's no dialogue. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's he's brave. He's like so heartwarming, and he was such a breath of fresh air for anime this year. And I believe he is our best protagonist of 2022. Ochi, ranking of kings, best protagonist. That's that's a good start. Ranking number one in our hearts. That's beautiful. And no arguments compared to last year. <laughs> last year was Yatsuba sweep <laughs> oh. alright Rob our second category is best antagonist and our nominees are Askeladd from Vinland Saga Friend from 20th Century Boys Miranjo from Ranking of Kings Social Anxiety <laughs> from Bochizaraku and finally Shonen Jump from Aliens Area well not from Aliens Area <laughs> for its treatment of aliens area yeah there you go and it's really funny as we were just talking about this there's only five nominees for this one and i was looking i was like rob has to contribute to this list and rob could not contribute to this list because everything was either smut or slice of life and i was the only (laughs) one that read something that's like new or shown any yeah i didn't really read anything that had actual antagonist this year I think in the spirit of the award, similar to what we did with Netflix for JoJo last year, I think Shonen Jump has to go because this is our favorite antagonist, not the one who has done the most damage. That's right. Okay, but I still want to talk about how awful, awful, awful Shonen Jump is for canceling Aliens Area. It was so interesting doing this like men in black kind of slice of lifey type of thing. And then they didn't like that. They wanted more battle and bull crap and then they just <laughs> they just rushed it to a terrible ending and i knew they were going to the slow paced chapters of it where they're just giving out like parking tickets to aliens was so much fun you really no, saw the writing on the wall man i knew from the start i knew it didn't have a chance like i was like no no they're they're just trying to change things up a little bit and just like that she was gone she's gone shonen jump fuck you <laughs> well said I think the next one has to be social anxiety, doesn't it? <laughs> uh, I mean, it's it's definitely a primary antagonist in Bochi the Rock, <laughs> but Different it really Bochy. just brings more laughs and humors <laughs> than actual, you know, drama. So <laughs> that's fair. Yeah, pretty good antagonist that you pulled out of your ass, but uh, <laughs> but social anxiety is the biggest antagonist in the entire show for sure. So we have three left. I mean, (laughs) Maranjo is an awful antagonist. Everything about her is creepy. Uh, I mean, she's like 40 years old, and 
with the body Somehow of like a 19 like- year old she like murders everyone she like destroys kingdoms and she's somehow rewarded by marrying the 12 year old king of who is the son of the guy she actually wanted who was like a 50 year old man or something like that nothing is okay here (laughs) here's my problem with miranjo is that miranjo was such a like mysterious and interesting character in the first half of ranking of kings and then in the second half her story just totally falls apart for me which really takes away from her threat it just becomes kind of silly and stupid at the end rather than this menacing power that she was the entire first half i mean my big issue is she's like 40 and she's marrying a 12 year old (laughs) who is the son of the man she actually wanted yeah that's not very cool either um (laughs) Yeah, can we cut Miranjo now? Even though she yeah. was she was so terrifying for for a few episodes. Yeah, it, Miranjo's out of here. Okay, so I I had these two in my head for the last two as well, which is Askeladd from Vinland Saga and Friend from Twentieth Century Boys. I think Askeladd is like this charismatic genius, kind of an asshole type of character, and from the beginning, he just kind of draws you in, and the way he leaves us at the end of the season is also like badass and amazing but i think i was quite bored with him in some parts of the middle i have Uh, not i i really loved him as a he's not even a villain because he is more of an antagonist than a villain he's especially as the story develops ah it's more nuanced it's not like it's a lot more nuanced than that he's not like the mustache twirling villain but he does chop off thorfinn's dad's head and he does kill a lot of people. But he is right. Also- but that's just the nature of what he does. You know, it, it's not like it's a personal attack on Thorfinn, you know? Correct. But I think if you're sitting in Thorfinn's shoes, you'd call this guy a villain, is all I'm saying. I agree with you. Yeah, but uh, the way it develops is that Thorfinn kind of starts to see it differently himself. Yeah, he's very conflicted. This guy's almost like his dad in a weird Stockholm syndrome way. He is an antagonist at the end of the day, though. Oh, no, of course. But I'm saying he's not really a villain, which is what makes, a, in my opinion, a really good antagonist where it's not so clear cut. Yes, I think he's a fantastic character. Um, you have not touched 20th Century Boys, so I would like to paint a little bit of color here for 20th Century Boys. I am not done with this manga yet. I'm about 70% done. And friend is this character that's just a total mystery so our main character's name is kenji and he's just running his grocery store and all of a sudden one of his best friends commits suicide and then all of a sudden he starts hearing all this talk about people joining a cult and people aren't going to work and people are kind of doing cult-like things like they they're not thinking straight anymore and friend slowly starts creeping people up into the government and the police and he creates this virus that makes people bleed all over their body and then they just die uh and he starts spreading this out throughout the world and people keep trying to catch friend and he just keeps eluding them at every last corner and you think you got him like they have some guy working as a cop and he's like oh i got him and then there's a guy inside the police who works for friend and he kills that guy so like every time you think you're getting this much closer friend like knocks you out and I'm like 70% through. And I'm like, I think I know who friend is, but do I really? And he's oh, So it's a mystery too. Yes, it's a thriller mystery. And a, I don't know if it's a horror, but like whenever friend shows up on the screen, he wears this like childish plastic monkey mask. And then it starts the way that the mangaka draws him. Like it's all black. Then the shoes show up. Then the body shows up. And then you, you think you're about to see the face. And it's just the most off-putting thing when you see this monkey mask and it's like oh my god like where did this guy come from um so he's this terrifying force whereas Askeladd is this charismatic full character if that makes sense well ultimately these are your two antagonists i know Askeladd. i don't know friend you need to decide on this one i think if we're going by best antagonist I would probably pick Friend. If we were just picking best character, I would definitely pick Askeladd. Okay, but it's best antagonist. Then I think I'm going to go with Friend. All right, there's your answer. All right, Friend, the winner of the best antagonist award. All right, let's get to why we're really here today, Justin. Robert, before we get into this award, I have to make an apology to you. 
Oh, no. <laughs> Do you know what I need to apologize for? No, no. Go ahead. <laughs> I feel like I'm ready. Uh, <laughs> last year, I was ignorant. I was stupid. And I let the best waifu of the year get away from us because uh -huh. you were right. I was, I was looking at very gendered roles. What can this person contribute as the wife role? And um, like you said, this is your words. Waifu is a state of mind. There you go. And I was not in the right state of mind. So... So in the honor of the fallen Ayako-chan, she cannot win last year's award. That award has passed. Your from Spy Family has won it. But I would like to officially name this award the Ayako Best Waifu Award. Wow. That, that, is, that is beautiful. Ayako from Slam Dunk is truly a waifu that transcends generations and transcends Best Waifu of the Award of Years. Best Waifu of Award of the Year. Years. There we go. <laughs> I hope you accept this apology from me and that you will allow I don't. her to, to oh god <laughs> <laughs> will you allow her to it helps us grow. i will accept that who we got list it off best waifu i just did best antagonist you're up ah uh, th there's so many names i don't feel like reading them all <laughs> you gotta do it man I this is your I responsibility can't pronounce that. okay okay kitagawa marin <laughs> my dress up darling <laughs> you know that one we have uzaki chan from uzaki chan wants to hang out <laughs> We have Akane from Akane Banashi. We have Queen Hilling from Ranking of Kings. We have Lum from Urasai Yatsura. We have uh, <laughs> we have sweat <laughs> sweater puppies, aka Henri Te Tieri from Blue Lock. Uh, that was a very Italian pronunciation. <laughs> we have Desume from Love After World Domination. And we have Kyoko Shimizu from Haikyuu. Wow, this is stacked. Normally, we only allow six nominations, but all these ladies were too good not to include. We have a total of eight. I can't knock out any, so you're going to have to start. Um, I would like to call out there was an honorary ninth that I didn't <laughs> oh my God. get rid of. And I had uh, Chigiri, which is the redhead from Blue Lock on here. But <laughs> and let me tell you, I got about like... 500 screenshots of Chigiri because that is a beautiful man that was yeah. supposed to be a woman and is just just looks like that for the fan service and everyone <laughs> is also calling her or calling him princess and beautiful and it's a lot of it works a lot of yaoi vibes but um, honorable mention well deserved I, I had to call out the honorable mention because at the end of the day you can only have one waifu in a series and waifuism is a state of mind and we had to go with sweater puppies absolutely well <laughs> <laughs> You cannot give me any characterization of Andri Tiari, so we're cutting sweater puppies no, real no, no, quick. No, no, no. Don't, don't, no, 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 no that's done. Sweater out, puppies out. is not going anywhere. <laughs> you were using the logic that I used last year to cut Ayako Chan. We're talking yeah, about a no. state of mind here. Ayako Chan actually contributed to Slam Dunk. We're not here for contributions, Robert. We're here for who is the waifu of the year we're trying that's, to amend that, and learn from our mistakes absolutely ridiculous there's a there's amending your mistake from last year I so mean, you're gonna cut my, you're gonna cut my nomination of sweater puppies have you seen sweater puppies of course but <laughs> that's that's not all there is to it okay yes Rob. it's a it's obviously a state of mind it's a vibe but there also has to be a little more to it to create that vibe and create that state of mind all right. I mean, I'll let you do it, but I'm holding this agenda against you. Nah, that's you're being ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> Who do you want to cut? This is not a knock on Akane, but I just don't think she's waifu material. Now you need to explain what you mean by that. I don't think I, I'm not as far along in Akane Banashi as you are. Um, Akane gives me the shonen protagonist kind of like the Jolene vibe where it's like, yeah, like Go Akane, not really like the fucking incel, sit in my basement, look at this anime waifu character vibe, which is why I'm like, Sweater Puppies for me is a better waifu <laughs> than Akane, even though Akane is a way better character. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying, which one am I looking at as a pinup on my Dakimakura in my bed? Uh, and it's not Akane because she's just too, she's too boyish, too, let's go. I think you're in a bad place right now emotionally. <laughs> <laughs> do, do you get where i'm coming from i get where you're coming from and i'm uncomfortable <laughs> you know what i'm saying no i that you see that i understand akane 
might not fit that vibe and state of mind. I think she's an awesome, excellent character. That's why I had her in uh, Best Protagonist. Mm -hmm. She fits that, like I said earlier, Soma from Yukihira Soma from Shokugeki. Right. She's such a good, strong character, but I feel like part of being a good waifu is kind of lacking the actual character. You're kind of just like saying it because, like, yeah, yeah, this is it. Do you, you're not, do you know what you're not like fully fleshed out. Yeah. Does she give you waifu vibes as someone who's caught up to Akane Banashi, or do you just really like her as a character? Because I do like her. No, she character. she transcends waifuism and that degenerate, you know, title, <laughs> and is just like such a fantastic, awesome character. He's so I, I accept the cut of Akane. He's taking my words and using it against me. <laughs> <laughs> The rest of uh, them, I think, are complete trash, and I think they're here all to stay. Like, I would give out six Grammys right now, whatever. This is a it. very, very difficult discussion. I will get rid of Uzaki Chan <laughs> solely because of her haircut. The if she didn't look like a used Q tip, then she would probably be number one. <laughs> but, you know, <laughs> it just has gray hair. It's like a weird gray haired Q tip. Yeah, her her body does not match her head. <laughs> uh, okay, this is a tough list, dude. I mean, it's really up to you because I just cut Uzaki. You're struggling. How you feeling about Desume? Oh, uh, Desume or Desumi? Desumi. I I really don't want to get rid of her yet because. She is a Power Ranger villain with an absolutely amazing costume, mm -hmm. and she's incredibly wholesome and can barely handle ho holding hands. And she definitely nails a lot of those kawaii, cute waifu qualities. You, you can <sighs> hold her. I think we can talk about all of them. So for me, I only have two dogs left in the fight, and that is Kitagawa Marin and Kyoko Shimizu. Of the two, I would cut Shimizu first, but it feels wrong, if you know what I'm saying. No, it absolutely is wrong. I, I and... just am in the middle of season four, and I just got her backstory about how she ran track, and she's doing her best, and she ran and got um, Hinata sneakers, because he's a dumbass, and I also got her <laughs> inside the hot spring, and yep. I was like, damn, I wish I was second manager girl right now. I thought you were going to say, I wish I was the water. I wish I was the water, too. <laughs> how, much, how much would you pay for that hot spring water? Dude, I would drink that bath water, and I'm pretty sure it's not drinkable. So I feel like that should at least put her in top three. I know, but like, that Marin, claim. Marin, too, though. Marin's such good waifu. <laughs> what kind of sentence is that? Marin is such good waifu. We're using it as an <laughs> adjective now. You're an, you're an absolute caveman. <laughs> This is what they're doing to me. These ladies, they're too good. Marin, such good waifu. <laughs> <laughs> of, of yours, so you have um, Hilling, Lum, and Desumi. Which of these three is your weakest, if we could get this down to four? Or I would say one of mine, if you think. I would say Queen Hilling, and that's strictly because of how interesting and nuanced of a character she is. Like, you start off the series and you hate her, and you think she's some Game of Thrones antagonist that's gonna, like, ruin Bochi's life, and then she just ends up being so well-rounded and caring. If there was a best mother, maybe she would be in that category. She would, win she that would definitely category. win that category. Best waifu, maybe not. Yeah, I think Queen Hilling gets cut really early for me, frankly, but I knew that you loved her. So I wasn't sure if like you just like the mommy vibes or like you just wanted her to hang out for a while. Uh, she, I just wanted her to hang out. I wanted to be able to talk about her because she's a fantastic character. She is. So but we're not looking for support. character. That's what I'm saying. That's why Sweater Puppy should have been here for the fight. No, that, that, but you need some character. You need to exist. <laughs> this man is like a politician. He goes on his word, then he backs out of his word. Well, you're you're being s9 s10 s11 you're being absolutely insane <laughs> so what do we have left at this president point? um is god kitagawa marin lum desami and shimizu okay you are about to get rid of shimizu so i think shimizu gets cut because we're kind of flirting with this line her contributions and appearances are so minimal but like she's adorable she's a great character in the role that she fills and her design is excellent but she barely talks, and 
you don't get her for most of the season. She helps the boys prep and stuff. But when when the matches are starting, she kind of fades away. Um, so based on number of appearances, she kind of loses it from me. Yeah. But that's, that's that is fair. the exact criteria that Ayako Chan lost on last year, and she should have won. All but double but Ayako Chan is perfection. I'm not arguing. Just say okay. So we're good. <laughs> we're good. We're good. I just want to clarify that. I think this is ultimately a battle between Desume and Marin. Really? And that's because Lum has had her time in the sun. She's had her time to shine. She's been around for like 40 years. She doesn't need any more accolades. But dude, this is our waifu of the year. Which right. one gave you the state but, of mind? Is it Desume but, giving you the state of mind? Lum has been so many degenerate human beings waifu over the course of... <laughs> like half a century that it just feels dirty to add myself to that group you know what i mean when you watch invader lum actual question like do you get waifu vibes from her or do you just acknowledge her as the grandmother of all waifus you get what i'm saying yeah i I guess that's a good question i don't know if i necessarily feel that attachment or feel that you know wish of why can't i also be 2d yeah the disgusting beard vibes um yeah yeah like, sort of how last year, Yor won the award on the fact that we couldn't agree on things, but Yor has never given me that feeling. I was just like, yeah, Yor's awesome. Yor's a badass. But I never felt, like, disgusting about Yor. That's because you were wrong. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, you, you want to cut Lum, and we're down with Marin and Desime. So do you want the cosplayer or do you want the actual person that is fighting the fight? You want the one that pretends to dress like she's fighting or do you want the actual fighter? Because <laughs> honestly, Desume, okay. she does it all. I'm okay to Marin, let Desume win this one. Yeah, there we go. You I, know what? I would say this is the thing about Marin. Marin's almost too perfect. Like you're, this is like a high school boy's self insert dream. Like you just meet the hottest girl in school, and she's like, "I'm coming over to your house and undressing in front of you for the first time we've ever met. Measure my boobs. We're going to the beach. Let's be best friends. I support your interest after me- meeting you for the first time." Like Marin is perfect, almost too perfect, which I think takes away from her. I think, I think it's the opposite though. I think she is the self insert. And Gojo is like the perfect man, and that's who it's being written for. Like Gojo is excellent; he's amazing. He does all this thoughtful, uh, great stuff for her. He stays up all night for weeks to sew her her costume. Like he'll he'll drop everything he's doing just to make Marin happy. That's and a really interesting perspective. Ultimately, yeah. Ultimately, you're right though. Like she's too perfect. I I think that's weird to. To say that though, because it's like you can understand why any guy would want to be with Marin, but like Gojo's sort of like this incel guy who paints doll heads and has no friends, and she's able to see all of his good sides and ignore the bad parts, which is why I'm kind of going the opposite direction that she's kind of the perfect one. No, I agree with you, but I think they're both written very perfectly, mm. and there's not really any conflict other than your typical BS rom-com, will they, won't they, even though we know they will, and they both want to. But will they ever actually <laughs> is the real question. Yeah, in 300 chapters. So, Robert, why don't you give the <laughs> <That's me>. award? <laughs> you know what? Her series got canceled, so she's going out on top. She is the queen of the Power Rangers villain squad, and there is nothing cooler than that. And the queen of your heart. Absolutely. Both of our hearts, because she's our best waifu. Waifu of the year, Desume. Did not see that coming. Did you have her in your... Like, were you fighting for her from the beginning? No. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's a gut thing. Like, once we're starting to talk about it, she's the one that I felt the most strongly about. Sweater puppies, R.I.P. Stop. <laughs> I will. I will post a picture of sweater puppies so people understand what I'm talking about. Okay, <laughs> you do that, you freak. For our fourth award, we have best husbando. Our six nominees are Kong Ming from Your Boy Kong Ming, Thor's from Vinland Saga, Tsukishima from Haikyuu, Darush from Ranking of Kings. Kiyomaro from Gash Bell 2, 
and Lloyd Forger making a second appearance uh, after not winning last year's award. So he's back, boys. He's ready for business. Okay. Uh, first off, it's Kiyomaro. Why are we even having the discussion? <laughs> it's not Kiyomaro, though, unfortunately. What do you mean it's not Kiyomaro? You, you can't just sit here and say it's not Kiyomaro. <laughs> it's not Kiyo. At least for me, it's not. How? Kiyomaro is like someone we've known for a long time and having him come back has been an amazing experience this year but he's not like he's not like daddy you know like he's cool he's super cool and he's badass as hell but he doesn't give me like the oh yeah that's my husbando type of vibes like he's not sexy he just is awesome but that that first panel when we first saw him didn't that do things to you make you feel something that you haven't felt in a long time in a very specific area of your body. <laughs> yeah, the heart. Because right? <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> the doki dokis, that's what makes a husbando. Yeah. Maybe a little too wholesome though. Like it's not like you know how like we're degenerates when we're talking about be- best waifu. Kiyomaru is sort of like not degenerate enough for me when we're talking about best husbando. You, so almost... you wouldn't want to do like the filthy things to him because he's so just pure, and we've been with him for so long. When you're playing Fuck, Marry, Kill, and you have this list, you're marrying Kiyomaro, but you're not trying to bang him. Right, but I feel like that also applies to Lloyd. Which is why I don't think Lloyd won last year, because I think Lloyd loses points last year because he kind of has that social awkwardness. Like, he doesn't, he's not, he's not smooth and, like, warm. He's very cold to the point, gets the job done. And you brought him back I'd love to hear why you brought him back besides the fact that anime has been fantastic. I think I brought Lloyd back specifically because my wife asked, do people on the internet love him? Do people on the internet like simp for him? And I said, yes. And she was like, I can understand that. <laughs> <laughs> I was actually, I was dating a girl over the summer this year and she's never read Spy Family. She was only watching the anime. She's like, oh my God, Lloyd is daddy. I was like, okay. Lloyd is daddy. So. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's where I'm coming from, and I guess that's where you're coming from too. Is that there clearly is a big husbando community for Lloyd, probably bigger than anyone else we have here. Without a doubt, that he has the most pull on this list. But this is our this is for the two of us. Again, this is not us trying to please the viewers. This is who's who's making it for the two of us. No, you're right, and I can accept that. So. It sounds I'll, like we're not going to have an easy elimination here. Why don't we just kind of go through some of the characters? Well, I, honestly, I'm kind of with you on Kiyomaro now, so I'm, I'm willing to get rid of Kiyomaro. I think there's just this issue of him being with us for 20 years and us having that long-term experience with him that kind of takes away from him being a husband now all of a sudden. Yeah, I mean, we saw him as a kid, and it's like, yeah, Kiyomaro's the man, and he solves problems, and he gets shit done, but he's not the sexy I, get, I, I got you. you know? <laughs> um, I don't want to cut Kiyomaro first because I think Tsukishima should get cut first. Oh, I, no. <laughs> oh, yeah? Okay, we can cut Kiyomaro first. I, I honestly, don't... Tsukishima is my best boy in Haikyuu. He's best boy, but he's not his bando. They're different. Ah, oh, you know, you're right. You're you, right. You get what I'm saying? Like, if we had a best girl award, Akane would win best girl over all those smut girls. But... But I also... I, I don't want to... <sighs> it's tough. This is a really tough list because I'm with you on Suki. I'm not, I don't want, you know, Kung Ming isn't the guy you want to be cuddled up in bed with late at night he, he's as just he's a reading you he's, he's another, The Art of War, you know. Yeah, he's so funny. He's a great, these are great characters. And Tsukishima, I watched season two through part of part four uh, this year. And Tsukishima has had such a character arc that makes him an amazing character. But he's also 15 and he's not a husbando. Uh, in that way. So why did you nominate him? <laughs> um, we need to fill the sixth spot, but he's an amazing character, and I just think he deserved his individual shout out as well. You know, uh, I'm really thinking it's Lloyd. I'm kind of thinking. I'm kind of leaning towards Thor's and Darush, to be honest. I don't think it's. I don't think it's Thor's. Thor's? What do you have to say about Thor's? Okay, Thor's is daddy. Yes, yes, he is daddy, but he has a very I... short span. Right. Um, appearance, which is, I know is what you're taking away from him. But in those four episodes, he leaves an impact and he he lives and dies in the daddiest, most husbando, badass way possible. 
Like he does not. He never loses. No, I I get that, but I feel like for somebody to be my wife or husband, they need to be alive. Come on. No, 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 no. That you can't be that upset that that's my argument. That's such a lame argument. If a character How? dies at the end of a series, uh, it's waifu for lifeu, not husbando for like seven <laughs> chapters, four episodes. But we're not and then counting. you're dead. Exactly. <laughs> I think of all I, the characters here, he exudes the most husbando daddy energy. But part of that is because he's also an actual dad. No, that that's not what it is. Like we we you can get Yotsuba's he, dad, and it's different. It's not like well, he was action. a great husband, though. It's it's very different comparing. <laughs> uh, what's his name? Uh, Kawhi. Kawhi. It's yeah. Very different comparing Kawhi to Thor's. Okay. <laughs> I I take Kawhi in that fight every day of the week. Oh my goodness! I think we just have different tastes in his bandos. I think that's what our problem is. I gotta be honest. It, this is this is tough. There, there is one character on this list that we have not talked about. Let's talk about Darush a little bit. Shield Daddy. Shield Daddy. This is how I feel about Darush on this list. I think Darush is a daddy. I think we'd both be settling for Darush because he's maybe. It does feel like settling. That's why we haven't even talked about him yet. It would be settling. He's kind of like the Yor of last year's list. Like I wanted someone else, and you wanted someone else, and then we were just like, okay, let's give it to Yor because that's our mutual like second or third place. And I don't think Darush is either of our first place because he's not a main enough character to do that. But everything he did was like, he's the ultimate husbando to um, to the queen. I mean, he made all the sacrifices that Thor's did, except he lived. And he gets the he gets the waifu at the end. He gets the queen right? healing. And he loses an eye, loses a leg, and he just does not give up. He's the man. He might he might be best Chad, but maybe not best husbando. I think he he's like best supporting husbando, but he doesn't <laughs> carry enough ca- character weight throughout the series to to really rein it in and pull out the win here, right? Because we could both put him here, but it wouldn't feel right. It sounds like you're arguing Thor's as your best husbando. Thor's would be my best husbando, but I what are you leaning on, Lloyd? I think it's Lloyd. I could give it to Lloyd, even though like Lloyd, Lloyd is like cool and sexy, but he's kind of like brain dead in certain parts that bother me. <sighs> You're right, and you can never actually really trust him. Yeah, like you don't actually want to be in a relationship with Lloyd, but again, this goes back to what's the feeling in your heart tell you? The feeling in my <laughs> heart gives the four episodes to Thor's way over Lloyd, but I'd be okay with Lloyd because he is a sexy motherfucker. But then it's oh, so we're. Oh man, this is tough. Let's let's go. F- mm. Let's just give it to Kong Ming. Let's give it to Kong Ming. Let's <laughs> Kong Ming. <laughs> this is all part of the strategy. <laughs> <laughs> this was his strategy from the beginning. He's like, they're going to overlook me, and then I'm going to come back from behind and win it. Damn, that was wonderful. Okay, Kong Ming, best of Bando. I- I'm okay to give it to Lloyd, honestly. Like, if you want to. But isn't this just what we did last year with your? <laughs> But no, but you'd be you would be the one who's really fighting for Lloyd, and I'd be okay with it. I think I'm fighting for Lloyd for all the ladies out there. What about you, though? What does your heart tell you on this list? <laughs> my mind is saying Lloyd, but my heart is saying Kong Ming now. <laughs> <laughs> is Kong Ming sneaky? I think he's like gotten it in my head because before you said Kong Ming, I was sort of like, why don't we just fuck this thing? Let's just give it to Kong Ming. <laughs> I think we should give it to Kong Ming. <laughs> Is Lloyd just going to show up every year just to get beaten down at the last second? <laughs> it's Kong Ming. Are we doing this? It's Kong Ming? Yeah, we're doing this. It's Kong Ming. I can live with this. I actually don't mind this. <laughs> All right. With the come from behind victory, Kong Ming <laughs> with the best husband award. <laughs> fit, Amazing. Fits no, neither of our husband or criteria. He's not like this giant badass looking guy that i was looking for wasn't the smooth cool secret agent you were looking for that was beautiful i love it it's part of his strategy all along we fell into the trap (laughs) robert this one's yours all right we got best mentor (laughs) kong ming returns from your boy kong ming we have katsuta tora from real we have despa from ranking of kings we have sensei from blank canvas and we have Shiguma Arakawa from Akane Banashi. I think Kong Ming's got to go 
And part of it's like, I don't want to give him two awards. But the other part is he doesn't really mentor anyone. Like he's sort of her advisor, her strategist, but he doesn't like teach her the ways of music. He doesn't teach her the ways of gaining a social presence. He just does it for her. Right. And she doesn't really look up to him. They have kind of an equal footing relationship. Yeah. So she's like president and he's like the the strategist. I think you could have gone with she's the queen and he's the prime minister or something like that. There we go. That's much better. <laughs> but regardless, I think he doesn't fill the role as well as these other four do. No, I, I agree with you there. So I'm fine with getting rid of Kong Ming. Um, I'll get rid of Shiguma Arakawa from Akane Banashi. He's a really solid, supportive uh, shonen mentor. But he's, you know, he's not that interesting. Is this the old man or is this one of the boys? No, this is the old man. He was Akane's father's um, sensei, or I guess, I don't know what the official term is in Rakugo. The one who canceled then, him? No, 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 no. Oh. The guy canceled him was somebody else. This is the one that was his teacher. Oh. And then after after his student got expelled, he took in Akane at a very young age and trained her in Rakugo. Oh, okay. I because I'm thinking about the guy who canceled dad no, 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 became no. her teacher also. So I'm clearly far enough behind that I didn't realize this. Yeah, I don't think you even picked up on it. But you know, there's not a lot to him. Okay. Um I can get rid of Katsuta Tora. So the main character of Real, well, there's three main characters, but one of the main characters of Real, um, he gets like cancer in his leg and he has to get it cut off before it spreads to his body. And they had to do this weird surgery where you take your foot and you spin it in the opposite direction. So like your toes are facing forward. They are now facing right. backwards and reattach that directly to the kneecap. And they do that to create a hinge. This is a real surgical procedure. And the main character who was going to be like an Olympic runner is totally distraught. And he, now he has this weird backwards foot knee and he's really self-conscious. Um, and he meets Katsuta Tora, who is also a uh, one one like decapitee and he's just like high energy kind of badass really like lives his life to the fullest even though he has this disability and he kind of encourages our main character to do the same i will cut him now though just because he also only shows up for a short period of time and is kind of like a flashback character and hasn't made much of a presence since then but he is a really good character okay. in the time that he's there all right, so that leaves Despa and the sensei from Blank Canvas. So I'll, I'll talk about Blank Canvas. It's an autobiographical manga um, about a mangaka and her journey to, I guess, becoming a mangaka. Mm -hmm. It's very meta. Um, <laughs> so she has this sensei at this like art school in her town. He's very strict and very like nasty at first, but it's only because he's it's one of those like types of deals where he's trying to push the best out of you and once you know they stick it out and stay with his class he supports them to the end of the time it's just it's a really nice story and they form a really nice relationship it's a very sad ending to the story though and you know if we're going with my logic of the character has to be alive at the end for them to qualify for these awards <laughs> then maybe he doesn't make it. But I don't, I don't think that's uh, a good reason to cut him if he... No, that's a joke. I, I was just okay, kidding on okay. that. <laughs> but honestly, if Despa didn't exist, I think this would be an easy answer for me. But Despa is so classic in being that like shonen anime mentor and so well done with it that I, I can't pass up on Despa. Despa was my number one as well. And I think to your point, he's he's classic, but at the same time, he swerves so much from yep. what you would expect your typical shonen mentor. Like he's not strong, he's a little conniving, he's so funny, he wears these floofy pants, he's not badass at all, but he still sort of is, even though he's not supposed to be. Yeah, there's just it's kind of like our wife who has a discussion once again, where it's like a gut thing. Like Despa is so well done as a mentor he made me feel things i haven't felt since jiraiya in terms of a mentor you know where you just like love everything about this guy and 
everything he does and the way he does it his design is awesome it's hilarious it's stupid he's hilarious his characterization is awesome it's hilarious it's stupid he just works for me i also love that he can like do walkie talkies with his brother who is like miles <laughs> away he's, he just whispers into his hand and, with the whispering <laughs> and he gets auto telepathy it, it's it's definitely despa yeah okay despa number one for best mentor our second to last category is best battle number one is takamura versus keith dragon from hajime no ipo we have shiratori the scorpion versus matsuzaka from real we have thors versus Askeladd and crew in vinland saga hina versus chinitsu in blue box <laughs> gash and kiyomaro versus wig and gil from gash bell 2 and finally Karasuno versus Shira Torizawa from Haikyuu Season 3. <clears throat> I don't know if this one deserves to go first, but I'm going to do Karasuno versus Shira Torizawa just because this was a battle that kind of overstayed its welcome. Yes. The thing is, it's one of those fights that's like, it's not bad. There's no way I could ever call this bad, but it's also... I don't want to say underwhelming, but you, you feel like something was missing or it should have been tighter or something because you left the, the season feeling like this doesn't feel like this is it. Right. I, it was, I just watched an entire season's worth of anime and only one thing actually happened. I'm actually okay with that. It just felt like something else was missing. Like It didn't feel satisfying. And I think one of the biggest reasons for that is because shira torizawa is very one note like you just have um their star player i think it's ukajima and he's also very one note and it's just like he's a powerhouse and together we can take him down as a team but they're not particularly interesting or full of character or nuance like someone like a like a agon from i shield 21 um that kind of makes you feel like wow they toppled this kind of villainous character with a lot of personality yeah, I mean, I think one of, I don't even want to call it a weakness, but the thing with Haikyuu is that it is very grounded in how volleyball works, mm -hmm. and I think that prevents you from having these, like, otherworldly antagonists, mm. like you had in Shield 21, or you had in Kuroko no Basket, where they were so ridiculous <laughs> and over-designed in their powers that they become so memorable. That's fair. You know, it, it's not necessarily a bad thing, but it does take away from, I guess, kind of the epicness of a battle. I think that on Shira Torizawa, though, like the most interesting character was the redhead, like kind of the creepy guy who gambles. Right. Um, and it's weird that like the most interesting character is not the main antagonist that you're facing off against. But um, yeah, we, we've spoken a yeah. bit about this, but I think this is okay to cut. I'll, I'll get rid of Thor's versus Askeladd and crew as well, just because it's more like a squash fight than an actual battle. Like Thor's just comes in and wrecks everyone. And it's super surprising to see one man take on like 40 of them. Um, and it's really awesome, but it's not really like a back and forth battle. That is what makes battles reach their peak. Yeah. And it ends pretty quickly. <laughs> yeah. So I'm happy to get rid of that one there. For me, I have three. I'm not ready to get rid of I was going to say, I have yet. three battles on here that, <laughs> could all win and one of them is yours that is not gonna make it which one <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to get rid of it now but let's talk about hina versus chinitsu are you caught up on blue box if i'm behind i'm behind one chapter well it, it's a pretty important chapter for the purposes of this conversation <laughs> if it's the chapter that i'm thinking about hina is not doing so well uh, I don't think it's the chapter you're thinking of because the battle is now officially over. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Wait, I think... Did you read the recent chapter where she's like hysterically crying the whole chapter? Yes, yes, okay. Oh, okay. That's what I'm well, it's yeah. not going well so, for her. <laughs> she has been defeated. <laughs> here's the thing. Chinitsu's not really winning either. She just kind of stood there and Hina is just keeps shooting her shot and keeps getting knocked down, which I appreciate her valiant efforts, but it's not like they're both vying actively no. for well, the for the Taiki Bowl. That's because Blue Box is horribly written at this point. <laughs> I kind of, I really loved Hina. Like she really grew on me this year. And um 
I, if if she lost, it's over. I don't think she. This battle is over. I don't even want to talk <laughs> about this anymore. I don't even know why I put this up here. Continue. <laughs> You're very upset. I, it, get rid of your other two so we can talk about the actual winner. No, come on. Okay. What do you mean, come on? Let's talk about it. You don't have any context for these other two. So Takamura is the like senpai boxing character of Ippo in Hajime no Ippo. And he is on a quest to win six world championships from different weight classes. And the reason why he wants six is because he wants to win the heavyweight world championship, but they won't let a Japanese guy from this nowhere country compete right away, even though he's that good. So he has to start at like the smallest level of boxing and climb his way up being like severely underweight and weak and dehydrating himself. And he is at a certain number of world championships at this point. And this is one of his world championship fights. And out of nowhere, Takamura is finally at like a weight where he's actually able to utilize his full power and fight this guy called Keith Dragon, who is, he fights orthodox, which is righty, but he's secretly a lefty. Um, so it's like, oh my God, like, is he, is Takamura strong enough to fight this guy when he's actually using his full power? So that's that fight. Continue. You have another fight. I'm not impressed so far. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, the next one is Shiratori the Scorpion versus Matsuzaka. This is one of the characters in real. Um, they lose the ability to walk after an accident. And one of the guys who's in the rehab center is this pro wrestler, like this giant of a man, like think like the Rouge or Thor's and he has a mohawk and he plays the heel. And he tells the main character and everyone in the re rehab center in three months, I'm going to be wrestling on stage again. And the nurses are like, that's not happening. <laughs> um, but he does it and he doesn't, he kind of cheats the system. He's, he's fighting against his longtime rival that he's had for like 20 years in the wrestling ring. And he's like holding on to like the sides of the rail and he's like punching the guy and like biting him and doing and crawling on the floor, trying to keep an appearance that he's actually okay to the entire arena that he's, that he's doing okay. But it's actually going to be like his last fight until he really gets his legs back, but he's barely keeping it together. This one is like really emotion filled. And I think it's the best match in all of real, even though that's a wheelchair basketball manga. And this is a pro wrestling. Match. <laughs> I think it can go here. You're, this is the one you're getting rid of. I would keep, oh, I don't know. Cause this one is the one that I respectfully will give second place to you for, <laughs> but I, I, it can't be anything other than Gash and Kiyomaro. After 15 years, we had a new battle with Gash and Kiyomaro and Zakarus and Zakarugas. I, I can't sit here and not have it as number one. It was the most enjoyable page I've read all year when those two were on the same page together. I, I It's simple. Easy. It's done. I'm sorry. <laughs> so honestly, I think that fight would probably be third for me on this list. And you have read a lot less shonen this year than me but also the another reason i'm hesitant to give it is because it's gonna win the award this is our co award of the year so i it will win the award but the other reason why i'm hesitant to give it rob is because this is the first battle in a long series of what is to come for gash bell 2 and i think the nostalgia lens is kind of here for you right now. And we're going to get way better battles for Gash Bell 2 that have a lot more stronger narrative, have way better antagonists. This is sort of like Gash and Kiyomaro fighting against this like ugly beast monster who doesn't really have much characterization. But it, isn't it about what you felt? Did you not feel what I felt when you saw them come together again? I absolutely did feel what you felt like. That's the testament to the other two fights for me. And I'm not saying that this was a bad battle. This was a fantastic battle. And Kiyomaru is doing his strategic shenanigans where he's like, shoot at the chin. You're actually shooting at the ceiling and all of that stuff. Um, that's how good the other two battles were for me. But I, I can understand you have no context for those. And I think I'm happy to let this win battle of the year, even if it's my personal third place. It's still an amazing fight. I mean, it's it's definitely an awesome battle. I do get where you're coming from, whereas it's, if this was just a battle in the middle of the series, I wouldn't feel this mm -hmm. way. It, it's the context of it being Gash and Kiyomaru fighting for the first time again when nobody thought there was going to be a Gash Bell tour. No anything. announcement. And I'm not trying to take that away from us. Um, we absolutely did feel so excited to watch this fight. And even if in a vacuum, 
this fight may not be like the greatest Gash Bell fight ever. We have to consider the fact that we love Gash Bell and this came out of nowhere and is back in our lives. And this was, this was epic. So no, no arguments. If, if you're cool, then okay. we'll throw it in there. I mean, I'd honestly be fine if you didn't agree with me on this. Uh, you know, is it the best battle? Maybe not, but in a vacuum, it was the most I enjoyed a battle all year. Maybe it's not because of the battle itself, but it was within a battle. I don't know. It's kind of hard to say if I'm blurring the lines of what this topic means. I think and this is not a shot at you, Rob. Just looking at your list yeah. of anime and manga, you have very few battles going on in your life that maybe <laughs> this also not clouded your judgment, but plays a bias there because I actually own four of these battles and you own Gash and Kiyomaro and Hina versus Jinitsu was your second best battle of the year. <laughs> so I'm just I'm just saying. That's fair. I ultimately I'll let you decide, but you know where I stand. As this is our co Oh man. You know, it is our co award. I kinda like Sheer Tour the Scorpion now a little bit, but before I was talking more in Q Dragon. I would be okay if that's what you decided, but <sighs> Uh, you know how I feel. I Here, let me put it this way. How about this? I think if you're comfortable, I would put Shira Tora the Scorpion versus Matsuzaka. And the reason why I say this is because 10 years from now, we will not even remember Wake and Gil because we're about to have about 50 more amazing battles in Gash Bell 2. God willing. God willing. Does that make sense? Yes, but when we do our full-on anime of the year... I expect a concession to be made on your part at some point. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> I will play that card at some point. It will definitely be considered. Okay, good. So our best battle of the year is Shiratori the Scorpion versus Matsuzaka from Real. All right, and that leaves us with our final topic, which is best song. So for best song, what do we have? We have the 86N theme, Avid. We have Ranking of Kings opening two, Naked Hero. We have Spy Family and Theme One, Comedy. We have Your Boy Kong Ming opening, Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. Is that the name that of the is song? The name of the song. <laughs> we have Isekai Oji san opening, Story. And we have Urusei Yatsura opening, A I E U. A I E O. I don't know. Oh, was it supposed to be pronounced? I, I think it's the hiragana. <laughs> Are you? Um, ah. Okay, so I, we've both obviously watched all of these openings and, and themes. The 86 one was awful. I don't know why you had it in here. I will get rid of two of them right now, and I'll, I'll provide context for them. The 86 end theme is not a visual marvel. Sort of like how you put JoJo Part 6 end theme here last year. Uh, it's just like the ocean water. This one is... I think the song is beautiful, and also the way they utilize the song at the end of every every episode. It wasn't like okay. the last two-minute mark, they're putting the song. It's sort of like when something epic is about to happen, and you're just like, what's going to happen next? They slap the song in there, and you're like, <gasps> and then there could be like six minutes left, and then the song will be over, and then they give you another perspective of what else is going on in the world. Okay, um, so that's, that is interesting in context, but in a in vacuum, context. it's not that enjoyable or fun. I'm happy to get rid of it. And I okay. know the other one I'm going to get rid of is uh, Comedy by Spy Family. Really? This one is, again, it's it's that end theme. It doesn't get the same love and budget as an opening. But the reason I put this one here is because this song really captured my attention since episode one. And that kind of led me down a rabbit hole of listening to Hoshino Gen, who's the singer for that. And now I have like a whole playlist of like 14 of his songs. And it affected me personally in my real life so i can listen to this i've listened to that probably like 50 100 times um but again in terms of the package of what is the best whole video and music package neither of them are going to cut it but i just want to give them both a little shine here no i mean i i love the spy family end theme the first one it's it's so cozy and it's just mm -hmm. like I, I like that kind of melancholic feel that it has um especially when you're coming from such a high energy comedy to end on that note is I, I don't know there's something about it that i really enjoy the feel it gives me it's kind of like a lullaby for me yeah yeah absolutely yeah, like not, not really sad but it just sort of like eases you out real nice now i was surprised you put the second ranking of king's opening on here i 
personally preferred the first. Can I listen to the first right now? <laughs> no, no, no. You put the opening sec- the second opening on. That is what it is. Uh, I'd be eliminating this now unless you really want to fight for it. I don't really want to fight for it, but I think that there's a really powerful story being told in this opening. This is the one where he has like his hands in the shadow. And yeah. it's kind of like all these different characters and how they're interacting with each other and trying to overcome um, the things that they're individually dealing with. I think the first one might have been a better song, if I remember correctly, but this one had better visuals and feeling, had a lot of heart in it. Yeah, I I think for me, it was too kind of slow and sad and depressing, where I felt like at this point in the story, Bochi was like, you know, hyped up and fun and like excited and like a real fighter. And we're like kind of going back to the point where he's like sad and everything. It, It just didn't like start me off on that hype. The first one is like very cheerful and fun. I just listened to like a small clip of it. I, I just um, think the order of these OPs <laughs> didn't really. Yeah, that work. other one probably could have come first because he's going through a lot there. But yeah, we can get rid of um, Naked Hero. Great opening. Okay, you're up then. I think what's really funny is I think uh, Avid and Naked Hero, they're kind of like these epic strong songs. The next three we have are just like pure lunacy and <laughs> stupidity, which I kind of love. Oh, yeah. Uh, we have your boy Kang Ming, Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, where like it goes on the car that this ancient Chinese strategist is driving and he's getting fancy sunglasses and it, it's it's a bop. Then we have Isekai Ojisan, which is, I really love it because it kind of integrates all different types of forms of video games and pixel art. And it's, um, if you had replaced the main character with some kind of badass it would be like really cool but because it's the uncle it's so silly like it's it just, hilarious yeah it breaks it and you haven't seen this one but you you watch the you watch the video and i think ursa yatsura is just like maybe the most clean and polished and beautiful the colors are so eye-catching and sharp so they all kind of bring something different to the table the cool thing about the ursa yatsura one too is that um it kind of adds like modern touches. Like you see the main character like on his phone, on like Tinder. Clearly, like scrolling through Tinder. Obviously they didn't have smartphones or Tinder or anything like that in the eighties when this story was written. So it's cool that the OP kind of like modernizes things a bit. Yeah. I, I think that is cool. Is that kind of where your head's headed between Urusei Yatsura no, and I Kong mean, Ming? Honestly, Kong Ming is the one where like, I still like hum this to myself. This is like an, <laughs> an OP that will go beyond this year for me. I love this OP so much. I know you didn't like it as much as I did, but like this was unskippable for me. I had to listen to it every single time. I love what it did, but the music, the music wasn't bad, but isn't something I actually enjoy listening to. I think it's, but I did. I know what you did. Bum, bum, the- chicky, chicky, bum, bum. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> <laughs> so stupid. So, I mean, all three of these are like Isekai Oji san and this one are so stupid. So, are we cutting Urusei Yatsura? Because I think that's actually a bop. No, I I love it as well, but I, it, for me, it's your boy Kong Ming. It's Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. I can, yeah, we can do Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. Um, oh, I know, bum, I feel, <laughs> it, it feels like I'm sort of, uh, kind of giving into a lot of these but i'm okay with it like i'm not super if it's if there's something i'm super passionate about i'll fight for it but i think all three of these have their own ways of being the best here and i'm happy to give it to jitty jitty bang bang well and on a fun note i like it dude i think any three of those would have been fun <laughs> yeah that's true they're all great <laughs> there you have it guys our seven award winners congratulations to all of them but guys this is just the appetizer of what's to come tomorrow we will be going through 63 anime and manga assuming our list is correct and up to date it's only 63 i thought it was like 80 so this is this is what happened i told you last week it was 80 (laughs) what happened the the column was summing up the actual numbers inside of our list and it was just summing 86 (laughs) that makes sense okay because i deleted one the other day i was like okay how many are we at now and it's at 86 still i was like what (laughs) i see Um, so we have 63 series that we're going through which i'm actually pretty happy about because i was like i don't know if we could do four hours together (laughs) about two and a half three hours which is plenty of time but uh we hope you guys enjoyed this episode and stay tuned for tomorrow when we release our final episode of the year 
the anime and manga of the year to find out who will be the strongest under the heavens of 2022.